And welcome back. So, mm. as it drifts in, the room begins to light up, and you can now, the rest of you especially, make out the details in the chamber around. You can see this, the scattered gold and silver and copper and all the coins that are kind of just lost between the little cracks in the ground around. You can see the hanging chains and bits of partially constructed mine shaft uh, Utilization. You can see the equipment and uh, partially built scaffolding that spiral upward as the chamber continues before it crests into kind of a, a rough natural dome. And you can see the dozens and dozens of different tunnels that splinter off in different directions. What you do see is the two creatures, the two humanoid beings that are kind of hunched over the tables and the sides, kind of their heads go straight and kind of look over towards the entrance as you approach. And where you see the rest of you who are now getting eyes for the first time on the Shade Mother and her bulbous form affixed to the lanky, talon-like limbs to the front. Children, come. Gus like, what am I doing? Light, light it up, Do light it. it up. Light it up. And he goes ahead and throws that singular red bead as it arcs past, and you watch as she kind of looks over her shoulder down to where it's shooting, and you can watch this bead kind of glow up the sides of the rock as it passes over and hits the edge of where that large kind of cocoon-like portion of the body she left behind with the additional kind of pods beneath it were set, and some of the other shade creepers are like clambering down the wall there. The explosion hits, and you watch as close to a dozen or more Shade Creepers immediately burst into flames and fall from the ground, <laughs> spattering across the far rock side. The Shade Mother turns. Okay, um. No idea what to do. It's very dark in here, and Run. I can't see. So I am going to cast Daylight Ooh. on top of Mother. So whereas the the shadows have been consuming the majority of this chamber, those of you without dark vision have been kind of fumbling it through, just trying to focus where you can see the outer rim of, of soft glows making out the shapes around you. Suddenly, this bright, piercing light sees ah, the entire chamber. Sorry, I just can't see. <laughs> As it does, uh, you hear Mother. Oh. Screech back, clawing at her face. Okay. And Get all the shade back. creepers <laughs> withdrawing from the okay. bright light. Hey. Here, we Here we go! All right, uh, finishing first code is now Lady Emoth's turn. Oh. Lady Emoth darts from the space behind, kind of scratching at her eyes, screeching as well. <laughs> And rushes under here to try and get out from under oh, wow. the light. Chetney, you're up with Orm on deck. Okay, I'm gonna take the little. I'm gonna take the little bead. Mm -hmm. and say tag you're it and hit her with it. So, you see her there behind, kind of like hit the, the side of the rock just as you dart around and visibly go rushing up and like leap in the air through the small section of rock where it opens up to where she's now kind of like rubbing her eyes. And like, ah! She spins just in time to hear the sound of you impact the stone as you land, not seeing where you are and looking above where your head is as you just poof, punch the, the bead right into her gut. Nice. And then suddenly there's this weird sucking sound. And this sudden flash of energy, and you watch as this kind of amberish orb poof, surrounds her like a bubble. Poof, and she's now. Ooh. Nice. Whoa. Scratching at it, making no sound and no impact on it. So where in Lady Emoth is, there is now this amber orb. They'll figure it out soon enough. And I reach out and I dig my fingernails into my face and I split my face in oh. half. And a snap yes. comes shooting oh. out as I oh. Hey, mom spaghetti! No. And I jump and <laughs> Slash uh, through uh, the abdomen. Slash and slash underneath, <laughs> carving out as you do. It is tough hide. It looks semi translucent, like up close, especially well lit in this room. So it looks like it should be easy to pierce, but it is tougher than you expect. But you do carve through and kind of a, a caramely colored kind of liquid kind of spills out oh. from the wound uh, as you get a little bit of a cut, but rush through off the other side and sh shake it off your blade and spin around. At the end of your turn, she's going to use another legendary action to make a stinger strike on you. Another stinger! 
Thing. Spins around in the stinger. No, it doesn't it pierces right. you kind of right underneath where the left peck is and gets about two inches in there as you grab it and hold it from going deeper. And it's an immense amount of strength that takes you off the ground for a second. You have to lift yourself off and then catch your feet. Not before. Die you, the left peck. You feel it <laughs> pulsing through your blood, and you can feel like the hot, burning sensation of the poison coursing deeper and kind of spreading throughout your body. You see her, like, still eyes partially shut, glancing around the space around. These little folds Ew. around the larger kind of uh, <laughs> slug-like body begin to kind of pucker tightly and then sh <laughs> release oh, a caustic nimbus. Oh, as he's parting. Everyone within 15 feet suddenly gets spattered with an acidic liquid that just sh <laughs> diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> she sharded. Well, good thing I did the temporary. A five. Jeez. Five. You take 20 points of poison damage. Hold and on. You are poison. Orm, 20 <laughs> points of poison damage. Hellish rebuke. So I take the, the <laughs> shit that I is covered <laughs> on me. <laughs> And I just like scrape it down my arms, and it coats on my fingers. I'm gonna flick it back. Oh, yes. oh. Hair. Hair. As you flick it, the 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 strange kind of uh, translucent caramel liquid turns to like a pitch black coloration before spoof, onto the front of the body and burns the black fire as it impacts. Yes. Uh, you are poisoned, so I need you to go ahead. You f you feel that poison course through you, and suddenly it, it seems to move you. Outside of your own will, uh, I need you to make an attack roll against Orem. Um, all right, my servos start working in ways that <laughs> I, I spin around. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Get a hold of yourself. With that, now the husks are going to move. Yeah. They're both coming to swipe and strike, but as they're doing, they're trying to keep their face away and their eyes pointed away from the bright sunlight that's shining down from the center of the chamber, and they're just whiffing hard. Um, finishing their go. Imogen, you're up. I'm gonna put my hands together and then slam one of my hands down onto the ground and cast Shock Flare at second level. The husk you watch as it gets blasted. <laughs> it reaches back and it, if the table weren't there, it may have snapped in half. The table catches it as it smacks into it and then it <laughs> readjusts itself and you can see like parts of it are starting to fall apart. I'm gonna peek around the corner and I, I believe I can see the orb from here. I am going to use my stonky ring. <laughs> okay. And stonky I can carry up Every to time. a thousand pounds. Okay. So I'm gonna try to the globe over to me. So you go ahead and like hold on to the ring, feel the extension of its power outward and almost like invisible fingers wrapping around it, you go ahead and pull back, and as you do, the orb woof, lurches forward, rolling. <laughs> and the orb eventually <laughs> Rolls to a rest about 20 feet from where you're standing, and then you can see Lady Emoth just feral on the inside. Okay. Orem, you're up. Just attack, attack on that thing. As you kind of roll past, you slice once into the chest and then slash back over the blade as you do, the head just hits yeah, the ground. Yeah. The body stands there for a second and takes one more step towards nice. you before just collapsing onto the ground. Okay. Uh, finishing your go, Orem, it is now the Shade Mother's turn. Is going to go ahead and do another corrosive nimbus. Spray that acidic liquid Very around. A spray. Um, Ladna, you're up. All right. I'm just gonna kind of um, get up to the amber bowl and be like, oh, excuse me. I'm gonna just reach around you, and I'm gonna uh, go for that other broomstone that's up front. Um, one definitely misses. I think this one hits though with a 16. 16 misses. Oh. And I just back. I go to Fern. <laughs> Turn around. And I just look at Fern and I just go. The so shoulder shrug as you walk by her. I don't know what to do. Okay. Um, as you move away, the tail, and you watch as she walks towards you, shrugging. So, <laughs> so looking at Fern, and I just shrug, and then you just see. <laughs> it's the stone next to her head. <laughs> Finishing that go, it comes to FCG. Um, oh, right. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the machine. What do I see? <laughs> over to the front, and you can see this large contraption that has like a uh, looks to be like a, a strange wheel mechanism in the front, and a large lever on it. It looks to be some sort of like an an, an input uh, funnel. Oh, uh, I mean, I gotta pull the lever. You right? gotta pull the lever. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> 
you hear the sound, and that little funnel device, suddenly this black smoke begins to emit from it as a massive auger begins to spin. Digging and drilling What's into the drill? central pillar. As it does, the rock pillar in the center Whoa. collapses. Oh my God. You hear the, the heavy grinding sound, the machine coming to life, and then the cracking and <laughs> loud thunderous noise and boom as rocks begin yeah. to fall oh and tumble. God. This area is filled with dust <laughs> around. For a second, it feels like the whole world ended as it settles for a moment, and you hear the <laughs> the machine kind of like <laughs> grinding. Chetney, you won. You can take. There would be 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh no! But you are currently restrained. Oh, nine points. Oh, beneath a bunch of rock and stone. I'll turn to the shade creeper and say, What did you do? <laughs> Bring us to uh, Imogen is up. Can I try to get the uh, crystal out of this? Thingy. Uh, so you get down, and you can see it. It looks almost like an hourglass. Like there's two halves to this with uh, thin pillars that hold the two parts together in the center. These like twisted metallic, almost spider leg fingers kind of twist and, and grasp this gem in the center. As you kind of like pull on it, it is wedged in there, and you focus and focus, and you extend that part of your mind, that 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 well of strength that you're still trying to understand. And it's almost like two mystical hands reach over yours, and with one giant shove, the metal tring, wrenches free, and as you do, it almost pulls you off of your feet, the sheer momentum of it yanking out of the machine before you catch yourself and look in your hand and you see this purplish gem pulsing. It it feels almost electric in your fingers, like your skin kind of uh, has a weird tingle as you clutch it. Okay, can I climb up on top of the rubble? You leap onto the side and start climbing upward, and as you get towards the very top, you grab one piece of rock that sh comes free. You're like, shit, you reach back and grab something else, that comes free, and then you just okay. boof, boof, tumble back. Great, I'm going to misty step myself. I'm going to bamf on the other side. Yes! Okay. Right as you climb to the front, you pull free the first rock that's loose, the second rock loose, you start falling back, and boof, you appear right next Fucking to the orb yes. right there. Fucking that's much. Uh, can I ask a question? The the drill that's going, there's a big wheel on the side. Is that spinning? It's still grinding. It's still moving. It, it looks like it's kind of like grinding. You oh. hear like the auger shifting and. Oh. I pull okay. uh, a rope out uh, and go. I just bought this, and then I'm gonna run. I'm gonna oh, spring idea, or, um... up on the rock and then leap ten feet in the air to get by her stinger. And I command the rope to tie her stinger. Ooh. Okay. As you th toss the rope up and it attempts to wrap around, the back of her tail begins to retract. You see the stinger trying to pull in, but the rope catches into its barbs and is affixed to it. Ooh. And I land down on the drill and go, so sad about this. And I drop the end into the machinery. Oh, oh, you're tired. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, oh the rope God. begins to be pulled by the internal gears That's and mechanisms awesome. rapidly, and you watch as she, kind of not really noticing and caring, looks back towards the rest before, <laughs> and you watch her being yanked back towards you. Yeah. As part of this, because you roll high enough, you do not fall prone at all. You catch yourself. It hurts your shins a little bit, but you watch as the tail is now pulled into the machine, and she is currently like screeching. Between oh the God. the combination of uh, sunlight still blaring down upon her and the tail being pulled into the machinery, oh, wow. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. Around. But I just bought the rope. It's oh, no. worth every penny. Worth yeah. It is her turn. So you watch as as the the long clawed rake like fingers just go tearing towards you, and with every single slash. The machine tugs back, yeah. and she goes towards you to try and reach for you, and it pulls back. Oh my god! And you can see the smoke now emitting from it, and you can hear like the sound of gears on flesh. Many other shape creepers are starting to emerge from above and gather down the sides of the walls. Oh god! It's all Q. I've been doing go, go, go! I'm going last. Go! The creature, the shade mother, is still screeching and angrily trying to pull away from the machine and failing to do so. Full speed, head first into the darkness, back from whence they came. Bell's Hells flees their quarry in tow towards where they came. <laughs> 